when we show videos of scouting, I have a tendency to show the great days. The days when you find great places and uh, discover places that are going to end up killing a deer. But much like hunting, not every time we go out do we find such things. A lot of days are spent searching without a lot of reward. In today's video, we're going to hop around a little bit from southeastern Wisconsin to south central Wisconsin to midwestern Wisconsin and look at a variety of places in search of some good bedding terrain and a good buck to hunt. We don't always find great spots or great sign, but what we always do is learn from our experiences. And sometimes learning where not to hunt is as important as learning where to hunt and where not to spend a lot of time. You look at this stuff and you look at the complete lack of tracks and deer sign. I've walked a mile out here and I haven't cut one track, one deer track in an area that, you know, has been covered in snow, the same snow for over two weeks. And over two weeks in this whole mile I've walked, not one deer has walked. That's interesting. You know, a lot of guys come out here and they see this, no rubs or at least very few rubs. No tracks, no sign. They'd come out here at this time of the year and they'd overpass, overlook this area and think nothing of it. But what they gotta understand is deer migrate. They can't bet out in those cattails right now because they're deep in the snow and buried in water and everything else. And you know, what you gotta keep in mind when you see this is that this tree right here from right up there and that one until it died. I've shot probably between those two trees, a dozen good bucks, a few trophy bucks. <laughs> but uh, um, you wouldn't know it by looking at the sign now. You kind of got to wait for the snow to melt and look at the actual beds, look at the trails going in there. And do that at this time of the year when there's no snow and there's no deer in here because they're migrated to food and cover. They'll never even know you were there. It just goes to show with the lack of sign out here that you have to look at the right time. You have to scout at the right time. Now I can look at this and I can see beds. I can see them through the snow. I can see the sign and stuff. But I've been around this so much. And I looked at this so much that it helps me understand it. And even I have a hard time in it. I think anybody that's just starting out doing this type of scouting and hunting, this is a major issue they would have. They'd come out here, look at this now and say, I ain't hunting this. But there's still beds out here. There's still deer out here. There's still deer to be killed. And literally, I've killed a lot of deer out here. A lot of deer. And put a lot of friends on deer right here. And some pretty nice bucks. Uh, quite a few of them are mounted on my wall. <sighs> Sorry guy, but your supper tonight. <sighs> How many of you guys still eat squirrels? Hunt and eat them? It's a lost art. But uh, for those of you, you that are squeamish about killing animals, you know, you can do it two ways. You can go out and you can get your meat yourself, or you can pay a hitman to kill tame animals and put them in the store. Up to you. Maybe you feel a little better if you don't see the hitman kill them. But that's what it boils down to. And uh, that emotional part of you that doesn't like seeing the dead animal, we all have that a little bit. I mean, I don't want to see this poor squirrel die. I don't want to see me starve to death. I was put here to eat squirrels and rabbits and bunnies and deer. 
So this guy's going into the old gut tonight. Sorry, buddy, it's your turn. So now we just walked over a mile, probably a mile and a quarter out here and didn't cut one rub, one track. Now we get to this island where we looked at it on a map, this looked good, it has a little point off the end. But I want to show you as soon as I get on the island, well, look at this, all of a sudden we have rubs near the bedding. So you have to get down and check near the bedding. Probably not a lot of competition in these areas, but there's competition for these beds. It's a big, vast area, and there's only so much bedding in here. The rest is all big forest. At least now, it won't be a lot of potatoes and a little squirrel. It'll be a lot of squirrel and little potatoes. Nice. I was just scouting a little point over there. I should have filmed it, but I didn't. The point... Um, the beds didn't look well used, and there are a couple real high rubs. But normally that spot is just tore up with rubs. And I remember thinking, it only looks like one buck bedded here during the season. And it came, made me kind of wonder if it's a big dominant animal. There was a big animal in there last year that's got to really be huge this year if it's still there. And, uh, you know, usually there's a lot more sign in that spot. I was starting to think, man, if there's something really big around here, I should see some really big sign, you know, not just a couple of high rubs next to the bed. And look at this. I don't know how well that shows up, but that rub is really, really high. I don't know if you can see this, but look at that. That is really high to the center. And it's got tine marks here as high as my neck. I mean, uh, that is probably five feet off the ground right there. And this is four feet off the ground. That's pretty dang good. There's something big in here. See an interesting rub over here. Let's take a look on this trail. Oh, look at that. That's the same height as the last one. And where the center of that is, is where his burr by his head is rubbing. You know, it's the tines and stuff that are hitting up in here, but that's where his burr is. And that is four, four and a half feet off the ground. But what's interesting is if you look down, this one is about the right height for, for a one and a half year old buck. It's two different bucks rubbing the same tree. That's interesting. These are going in and out. Yeah, check out this track here. Look at that. That's a four finger track and it's like four inches long. I'd like to find that buck. Me and Eric taking a walk out into the woods. Uh, I forgot uh, my coat, I forgot my boots, I forgot. Yeah, you didn't bring much. Yeah, we had to stop at Walmart. <laughs> I just, on my defense, I jumped out of bed and just decided to go and jumped in the truck and started driving. Why do you feel the need to defend yourself so quick? <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> well, I usually wear my nice comfy uh, uh, gum leaf boots, but we stopped at Walmart and I picked up some PVC ones. <laughs> And I'm starting to really like my gum leaves because it feels like I'm wearing coffee cans. <laughs> and we just got out of the truck. We'll see what it feels like in a little while here. Yeah, we'll see if we even get out of here with the truck because I drove down this lane <laughs> to get off the road. <laughs> and we pretty much bottomed out and I gunned it to get across what we were in. And I'm hoping we can back back through that. I think we can get a running head start. I think we have to drive in the woods a little ways if and you just really fast, ram backwards over the top of that really hard. If you go fast enough, we might be able to clear the ditch. <laughs> right over right. the top. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this probably is about time we ripped that muffler off anyway, because it ain't doing nothing. No, it's just it's not doing much. It's just, it's just uh, hanging clothes all clothes hangers or yeah, clothes hangers have it tied to the frame. It's it's lasted for quite a while that way, I'm surprised. Yeah. Especially running through the ditch like that. Yeah. I got pulled over three times in the last two days. <laughs> and none of them said anything about my muffler. <laughs> yeah. No uh 
no light on my license plate. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, your uh, back bumper there, too, is a little rough. Hmm. That's kind of hanging on by a thread, too, isn't it? Yeah, I'm surprised they don't pull me over for needing a new Trump sticker. That one's wearing out a little. What did we tie it on with um, in Nebraska? It was twine. <laughs> yeah, twine. <laughs> twine is holding your bumper together. <laughs> All right, we came back here because there's a beaver dam back here. We want to kind of look at the back side here, see what's going on over there for both bear and deer. And, uh, you, you know, that's what you're looking for in this big woods is you're looking for openings in the solid conifer forest where there's food and there's transition and stuff. Um, we got in a little ways here. We This is the first beaver dam. I see another one up here. Right away, we see a conifer trap for uh, beavers swimming down there. You can see the framing of it somebody put there. So there's people getting back here, but back there is pretty remote. I, I, I'm really curious to see what's back there. What do you think? Yeah, let's take a look. We got that human trail up here. I don't know how far back that goes, but... I wouldn't mind just getting in here. The pines look pretty open. And just following without even going by the human trail. I think that, that trail was starting to veer off that way, yeah. which is good. It's a good starting point. Yeah, let's go. That's where we got to look. So we started over by those pines over there and we come along the edge of the swamp and the tags are kind of lower. And we saw a lot of historical rubs, nothing fresh. And it was just a little too open, even on the edge of that swamp for me. And even the open woods over there. But when we got around over here, I started noticing a really thick stem count and on the transition here. And we noticed that there's a heavy transition here of uh, higher tags. And now we're finally starting to see fresh rubs. I mean, it ain't a, it ain't a big rub by any means. Um, but it's fresh. Um, I'd actually say it's probably a year and a half old buck at the height. Where that's at, I would say that's a year and a half old buck. So it's nothing that big of a deal, but at least we're seeing fresh sign again. But I'm thinking on the other side of these tags, looking at this, or even where these tags meet this thick stuff here, this could start looking good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just too, uh, it's too thin in here. And, and we found this rub right where these taller tags started to pick up. So and as we were coming in here, we pointed that out. Right. Yeah. Right. So they're probably using this corner to kind of traverse through here. Doles anyway, and then that buck is marking this dole trail. Right. So I want to find some good sign coming out of there. You know, repetitive good sign. And then follow it back into bedding is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got a long ways to go around here, so I think we should get into something. All right, let's rock. I just elevated across this river. What are you going to do? Start from back. <laughs> the whole thing. I'm getting oh. out of your way. <laughs> this is easy. Oh. I make it look easier than you did. I'm, no, I'm, I'm used. I'm used too. to Ricky. Ricky'd fall in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we would have to get a helmet for Rick over here. So this is the point where some pines start mixing with the stuff and coming out. It's not much of a point, but it's a point. And then right away, we got rubs again. So this is more like the two-year-old variety. You see it busted a branch way over here. And there's some nicks on that too. But that's more up, you know, knee high. That's more two-year-old-ish. There's another smaller one over there. See, and this looks to me like this is a little more early season. I don't think this was done during yeah. rut. Well, you look around. That's a rut rub. You, you know, uh, what were you just saying about why they're not bedding in here during rut when they make rubs? Because there's no leaves, right? Mm -hmm. So if you look at this, this stuff's going to start dropping leaves and dropping sign. I would be willing to bet this is thick early season. Yeah. Oh, yeah really and early cool. season, if this holds deer, they don't rub as much. Right. But there are a lot of historical rubs. That's what gets me. I mean, every tree you look at here has historical rubs on it. Mm -hmm. you know, this trail definitely has, you know, there's historical there, there. But this trail actually has rubs on it, so you know bucks are using it. Um, and it's coming out of some pretty dense cover up here. Should probably follow this back a little bit. See where you're coming from. It's funny how this works, but uh, coming through this really dense stuff out here, um, we started seeing a pickup of rubs coming up here. Again, they were mostly one and two year old size rubs. But then we saw that there's a little rise here. There's a little bit of elevation, like a ridge. I bet you it's not picking up on camera, but we're up higher about three or four feet than the rest of everything else. It's just kind of a little ridge here. And uh, from the distance, we were saying, I bet you there's some bedding up on this ridge. And we got up here and there's a lot more rubs. And there's a bed right here. Looks pretty well used. Dented into the ground. Obviously you can see it hasn't been used in a long time. That would have been an early season bed when this is all leaf cover, when this is just like a jungle in here. 
and um, lots of historical rubs are on it and there's one fresh one here and this is the first one we're getting that has a little bit of height to it I mean, we're, it could be a three-year-old deer doing that matter of fact I'd be pretty sure it was and on a pretty heavy trail coming in out of here let's take a look at that deadfall because when we get in this elevation you're gonna see certain things that create the bedding first thing I saw was this bush I thought the way that lays out you're probably gonna see beds around the bottom of it mm -hmm. but coming up here I bet you that down, that deadfall's probably got a lot of the bedding especially with that thick background it lay over there and watch over here you know nice white oak right up top here yeah and this will all have cover um, this looks like to be this looks to be an old cut yeah I think it's an old cut didn't even notice but turning around to the side of this you start to see how high those tines come up yeah. I mean look at this branch is uh, six six feet off the ground I'm six foot uh, two and this is broken way up here and there's marks going all the way up so I'm pretty sure that that's a three-year-old deer mm -hmm. I would agree so at that. least we got one that's got some age to it it's been pretty disappointing looking at the lack of big rubs here for such big area you'd think there'd be more big bucks so let's see if there's any beds over here this is where I'd expect something to be laying you know, some of this stuff you can't really tell but you know a big buck's gonna bed with something to his back right in here is where I would expect there to be bedding uh, you know what though this might have fell after season there's still limbs leaves hanging on it yeah, yeah I don't see I much seen maybe in there but obviously not yeah I think this might be fresher than we think it's still got needles on it Piece of cake. What you got here? Got a ladder stand. That's not legal. It's definitely not. It actually looks too like. Uh... Been there a long time too. Look at this how it's growing up. Yep. Looks like this could have been cleared out at some time. I mean, it's pretty open yeah. in here compared to everything else around it. Yep. Mm -hmm. So what do you think is going on here? It's quite a shooting lane. <laughs> yeah. Horse is down. Somebody uh, cut down all these major trees here, all over for a shooting lane. Where where do you think they're sitting? Probably up in that oak somewhere. Or up in this poplar. I think they're up in that poplar. Looks like the forestry division came through here. Yeah, it's uh pretty bad. I think that oak tree is just about cut down from a, a beaver though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is like a little land bridge that he's hunting here. Yeah. That swamp and that creek here. It really doesn't even look like very good of an area. No, not at all. Yeah. Maybe maybe during a rut you might have a sh chance at a shot, but... Yeah, you still have a way better shot just going out into that... Uh, Across the water. That crap out there and getting a funnel in there. I mean, that's crazy that he cut down all these limbs, all these trees. Yeah, look at those limbs up here. Oh, he must have been in that oh, he tree. Must have been in that, that oak tree. Yeah. Not too high. Oh yeah, he's got lanes cut that way too. He's almost got like a little ladder here. Yeah. <laughs> he might have just been sitting right in the crotch of that tree. I don't know. And one thing's for sure, that when you follow river base rivers or creeks in, or openings in. You can imagine that most people do the same thing. So literally, kind of like we did, if you come in a half mile that way or a half mile this way and come back, you're gonna do better than these guys because these guys, just so many people follow rivers and stuff. They're afraid of getting lost. They're afraid of this, that, or the other thing. Okay. I mean, like literally, what do you need bright eyes for? You're following a creek, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So getting off to the sides is way better. Are you gonna get us out of this mess that you got us in? Well, what I'm gonna try and do is go up a little bit and just gun her backwards right through the crap. Pedal to and the metal. There's no vehicles going by. <laughs> <laughs> we should turn Hell's Bells on before we try this. Yeah. <laughs> Ready? 
I'm ready. Oh. <laughs> that sounded solid. I made it. <laughs> Hold on, is the muffler still on? I don't know. How does that look? Hit. It's not even so muddy. It's I mean, you hit the ditch. <laughs> it's just pretty steep. Let's take a look at the back of the truck. Yeah, let's do it. Well, the muffler's still hanging. Got a little. Uh, you got her. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> She's all intact. Good yeah. job. It's all intact. I heard you right hit right there. Yep. It wasn't even that bad. The Carol's sunglasses went flying off the dash. They're laying on the floor in there. <laughs> <laughs> Next spot. You know, I got a lot of heat about teasing the, uh, the trans and the, uh, the thems and stuff. So I'm really not what people think, you know, it's totally against those people or anything, you know, it's just, just having a little fun, you know, just to show my, you know, that I'm with them, I got my Elton Dan glasses. <laughs> like I said, I wish they had those polka dot boots in size 12 at Walmart. Yeah, well, that would get them. Those would go really nice together. Yeah, they had, uh, <laughs> they had polka dot boots. They're, they're green, like hunting boots, but they had like purple and pink polka dots. They're Look at the, this man. They're in the kids <laughs> section, and I really wanted to get up here, but they didn't have them above size 10. I, I challenge you to wear those the rest of the day and say nothing to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> they're actually kind of nice. It's like rose color. Yeah. <laughs> rose color. <laughs> oh, that's good stuff. Thought we'd stop over here and just take a look where the bear bait buck used to be and just see if there's anything in here now. See tracks over here like crazy. Well, not the hugest, but a lot of them. You know, we're just right where we park here. First time I came in here, we uh, parked here and I came down here and this pond was full of frogs and you see bear tracks all around the outside searching for the frogs and that's why we started bear hunting here. Hmm. I was kind of curious what brought you over to this area. Yeah. And then uh, we're parked there I found out the buck was bedding right here a lot, right in here. So uh, the trails would be crossing right in here, and meeting over in here. So let's just kind of. So he watched you come in and he watched you go out. Yep. <sighs> it looks like there's a lot of deer in here in this area. A lot more than the area we're just in. Yeah, I would agree. See if the rubs are still open, you know, there's a huge rubs in here when that buck was back. There's just a rub right there. See it? This is that oh, rub yeah. on there. Yep. So maybe they're still using it. Maybe we can find some of his old rubs. Look at that. Sure enough. All right, well, that kind of looks two year oldish, but it's not bad. There's a scrape right there, just a scrape. And he scraped the ground here when he was doing this. Scrape there, you see branch here, looking branch. This is where that trail came across from that buck. So they're still using this pattern. So there should be good bedding right up here in here where these little oak trees mixed with the pines and it's rolling. That's where he was bedding this, right up in here. Or up here. I really wanted to see if there's any rubs back here. So we found one rub next to the truck and not another one, which is typical. I mean, that buck, when we were getting him on camera, was the only big buck. I mean, I think we got an eight pointer once, um, like the next year. But typically, if we got bucks, there were spikes and forks and a lot of does. So if that buck dies, all the, all the rubs and stuff go with him. So we, we just walked through some really good cover, looked at some really good beds, no rubs at all. But what's interesting is this is the spot where, where we used to bait for the bears. Um, this is where we got the pictures of the big bucks. And I made this public. I put it in videos and everything else. I didn't care. I'm not really coming back mm -hmm. to this exact spot. And it's interesting because like all, all the spots that you were at once, I mean, people think that's where they're going to kill the next giant. Well, that giant's dead. But we get in here 
And we haven't been here. I mean, uh, Jeff's still baiting the area. He moved the bear bait down further because it made more sense to get closer to the swamp where the bears are coming from. But as we got in here, you notice this tree cut. This one snapped off, but that one actually sawed down. And then laid down here, another one sawed there. And you start looking around, and you're looking at, there's the tree I hunted out of. I hunted out of that dead one that's gone now and it's broken off. Can you see that? Let's take a step yeah. this way and you can see it. That dead tree used to be here. taller. It was dead when I hunted out of it when the bear bait buck came in and he was right here. The day he came in, he was standing behind that tree. I had no shot and he, he was stomping. So he was 15 yards from yeah, I know. Unreal. I know. Couldn't, couldn't get it done. So that little clearing in there, in that tree, I hunted there the next year because this tree was dead up there. But now we come in and we see that this tree is freshly cut limbs. And look at this. I mean, see how green these leaves are? Mm -hmm. That's not even hunting season. This is after season. He's prepping for this coming, coming year. This is freshly broke. Look at all these hacks up the tree. And it's like, he must be hunting here. And look, he put a screw step there to hang his bow. See it? You can see it well. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So, um, I think I say it well every now and then. I just try to make it real clear that just because there was one time a buck here and I hunted here does not mean that you're going to come in here and shoot a trophy right, buck. Right, right. But you can see the ethics and morals in the guys when they... They're hacking down. What reason do you have to hack down a tree? It's a straight, limbless tree. Look at this. What did this tree hurt? <coughs> That's hurting his view for getting shots off. Are you <laughs> Are you going to hit that tree in this open woods when you're aiming yeah. at a tiny clod? There's no reason to have to hack that tree down. I agree. I'm okay with if a limb's in your way, a little limb's bushy or something. You clip a little limb. You don't need to cut down the forest. That's ridiculous. Yeah. That's ridiculous. And this isn't even nearly as bad as uh, where we just were. I mean, we that was really cleared out pretty good. But. Yeah. Well, this buck is dead, and this well, guy and can have his dead buck to hunt. Yeah. And you said too. I mean, that that buck was here because of the bait. Yeah, he was. You know, I think he actually lived here. I do. Or close to but it at least. He, but yeah. When he bedded right here, he bedded there watching the bait because he was watching the bait. Yeah. Right. He was. I think from scouting, I think he was living where we were just looking, mm -hmm, which is mm -hmm. probably a quarter mile from here. Yeah, yep. Quarter, eighth mile. He moved to here because of the bait. He was eating sure. the pita bread out of the bait. We got pictures of him with a big pita bread out of his mouth. I remember that picture. <laughs> <laughs> Man, to be that close. Clark County, Wisconsin was a major disappointment. Me and Eric spent a lot of time and covered a lot of miles. And all the sign we found was old, of mature bucks. We didn't find fresh sign from last season of any mature buck in all the miles we covered. It was amazing how much that area has changed in just a few short years since I was in there hunting the bear bait buck. This one's been here a long time. <sighs> It's either an alien, a drone, a Biden spy plane. There's something in that uh, tree there, hanging from a string that goes way up. Looks like some sort of electric motor or something. <laughs> like maybe it's off of a hot air balloon. This is a good bed there. It's a weather center. That's what I thought it was. See the, yeah, see the, the spoons kind of maybe. It, it fell off of a balloon? That or the balloon was tied to the string. I thought they were Dan's underwear at first. <laughs> Wait till you see the underwear picture I'm going to show you. <laughs> that is crazy. So there's actually a little trail. Like a, almost like it's an old logging road, road or something. Hmm. Yeah, I... Yeah, I would have to guess that's some sort of weather or something. Yeah, <laughs> Definitely. That would be my guess. That's where I would rest my final answer. Well, that or... Oh! I wonder if that has something to do with um, some sort of beetles. 
It looked like some you know sort of some kind of uh, box it reminds me of what you would see for like ash borer tests that they do in trees. We won't stick around. It's a little ways up there, yeah. especially with you got a. 12 foot drop right next well, to you. I don't know if I should film this or if I shouldn't. Yeah, that's like suicide climbing all the way up there. If I was 50 pounds lighter, 20 <laughs> I was gonna I was gonna say if you were 20 years old again. I saw a monkey in a tree. Battery, light, weight, internal power, set frequency. It is some sort of weather thing. It must be off of a balloon battery? or something. Made in Mexico. I was gonna say if it says made in China, do we report this? <laughs> <laughs> what does that say on top? Mailing instructions. Remove bag for mailing instructions. Oh, so if you find it, you're supposed to mail it back. That's yeah. what you gotta do. No kidding. Well. <laughs> wow. So we found an alien. <laughs> <laughs> it's gotta be something with weather, because it's, you'd think, right? I yeah. think that Biden found out I voted for Trump and they was keeping eyes on me. He <laughs> said Chinese air balloons are here. That all the instructions right. are in there. You gotta, you gotta, email, you gotta mail that to Ching Chong. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna hold it for ransom and see what I can get out of it. Either we, Ching Chong himself or Ching Chong the second. If we can give uh, Ukraine a hundred billion, they can give me one. <laughs> huh, it's even weatherproof. That's got the envelope to mail it in. Yeah. <laughs> Tell you what the thing is. Fill out the radio sound return below. Carefully put the radio radio sandy into the mailing bag. Remove the paper tape from the flap and seal the bag. Mail at any post office. Use to Department care. of Commerce. National Oceanic, Oceanic and, Atmospheric and Atmospheric Administration. Weather Service. It's a weather station. It they were. It was a weather balloon. Mm -hmm. That is cool. <laughs> When you send that in, ask them if they're going to reimburse you your 55 cent stamp. It's, it's automatic. <laughs> it's, they uh, pay it. Yeah, I suppose. It's yeah. paid. It's yeah, government. Okay. We okay. paid for it. <laughs> yeah, we already paid for that. <laughs> we paid for this many times. Huh. Interesting. Well, cool. Can't find a big buck here, but we can find some shit we don't like. <laughs> don't let me know what comes with that. If they send you anything back, tell you any information or anything. Well, our scouting did not turn up any great leads and probably more so told me where not to hunt this fall. But that's important too. But at least we did lock down a great spot to have the Hill Country Workshop that everybody's been asking for. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you in the next one. <laughs>